Hey guys, what's up? I've got the scoop on some next-level tech that's about to flip the script on mobile performance. We're talking Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. Yeah, that's the official rumored name now, and the leaks are straight fire. I mean, this thing's tipped to smash Anti-2 records like a boss, and I'm already hyped thinking about how it's going to change gaming and everything else on your phone. If you're new to the channel or just love geeking out over chips, hit that subscribe button and drop a like. Let's get into this deep dive because it's going to be a fun ride. All right, let's start with the big picture. Qualcomm's throwing their annual Snapdragon Summit Bash in Hawaii, Maui to be exact, from September 23rd to 25th this year. Picture palm trees, ocean views, and a stage where they're dropping bombshells like this new flagship chip. It's just 10 days away from now, so the hype train is full speed ahead. This event's where the magic happens. They unveil the brains behind tomorrow's flagships, and this time it's all about the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. You might have heard it whispered as Snapdragon 8 Elite 2 earlier, but nah, leaks say they're going with Gen 5 to keep things fresh and confusing in the best way. Why the name change? Who knows? Qualcomm loves keeping us on our toes, but whatever they call it, it's the beast succeeding last year's Snapdragon 8 Elite, the one that's already powering monsters like the Red Magic 10 Pro. Speaking of that phone, let's talk real numbers to set the stage. Right now, the Red Magic 10 Pro is sitting pretty at the top of the Antutu charts with an average score of 2.67 million on version 10. If you've never run Antutu, think of it as your phone's report card. It blasts the CPU for heavy thinking tasks, the GPU for buttery graphics and games, plus memory and storage speed, all rolled into one big number that tells you how snappy your device really feels day to day. That 2.67 mil? It's elite. Your PUBG sessions run at 120 FPS no sweat, apps load in the brink, and AI stuff like photo editing flies. But here's where it gets juicy. Rumors from heavy hitters like Digital Station on Weibo are saying the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is clocking 4.2 to 4.4 million on Antutu V11. That's a whopping 58% jump fam, from 2.67 mil to over 4 mil. I'm talking your phone evolving from a sports car to a damn spaceship. Imagine Genshin Impact cranked to ultra with ray tracing that looks straight out of a console, or editing 4K videos while multitasking five apps without a single lag spike. My heart's racing just breaking it down, this could make 2026 phones feel like they're from the future. But let's not skim the surface. I gotta geek out on the guts of this chip because that's where the real excitement hides. Under the hood, it's rocking Qualcomm's second gen in house Orion cores, two prime beasts clocked at 4.61 GHz for those raw power bursts, plus six performance cores humming at 3.63 GHz. No more skimping on low power cores, it's all about big, efficient muscle to handle everything from scrolling TikTok to running heavy AI models. And the GPU, Adreno 840 at 1.2 GHz. That's a step up from last year's 1.1 GHz, promising smoother frames in games like Call of Duty Mobile or even emulating PC titles without melting your battery. Oh, and get this, it's built on TSMC's shiny new 3N N3P process, which means more speed with less heat and power draw. Early Geekbench leaks back this up, 20-30% to better single-core scores for zippy app launches, and 10-15% to multi-core gains for juggling tasks like a pro. Efficiency rumors say it'll sit power better too, so longer play sessions without plugging in. I'm telling you, if you're a gamer or creator, this chip's gonna be a game-changer, literally. Now, hold up, because Qualcomm ain't riding solo here. Enter MediaTek's Dimensity 9500, the scrappy underdog that's gunning to steal the show. Leaks say it's hitting a solid 4 million on the same Antutu 2 V11 test, making it a dead heat rival. That's 5-10% to behind the Snapdragon, but still a monster leap from today's chips. MediaTek's going all in with a OnePlus 3 Plus 4 core setup, 1 Mega Travis core over 4 GHz, 3 performance cores, and 4 efficiency ones, plus an Immortalis Dradge GPU for killer ray tracing and AI smarts up to 100 tops. Built on the same 3N node, it's got 16 MB L3 cache for faster app switches and supports quad-channel UFS 4.1 storage that could tack on extra points. Vivo and Oppo are first in line with the X300 and Find X8 series, and word is it'll crush in battery life and AI photo tricks. This rivalry, pure gold. Qualcomm's got the edge in raw GPU grunt for Western games, but MediaTek might win on value, cheaper phones that punch way above their weight. It's like watching two heavyweights trade blows, and us fans get the knockout phones. Quick reality check though, these scores are from Antutu V11 leaks, while today's leaderboards are V10, so direct apples to apples might shift a tad when official tests drop. 
benchmarks aren't everything real life matters more, like how it handles heat during marathon sessions or integrates with phone makers cooling. But even if half these rumors pan out, we're talking flagships from Xiaomi 16 series, OnePlus, iQ, Realme, and even a souped up 4 Galaxy version at 4.74 gigahertz for Samsung's S26 that could push scores even higher. AI features, smarter cameras that edit pics on the fly, battery, all day plus with adaptive charging, gaming, console level immersion. The next few months are gonna be stacked. I'm already plotting my upgrade. Whew, that was a lot, right? But that's why I love this stuff. It gets me pumped about tech that actually improves our lives. What about you? Team Snapdragon for that premium polish or Dimensity for bank for buck? Think we'll see 5 million scores by next year? Spill in the comments, I reply to everyone. If you want a full breakdown on the first phones or how this stacks against Apple, smash that bell. Thanks for hanging out fam, stay hyped, catch you next time, peace!